Okay, the recording is in progress. Now I got to get the uh, Facebook page up and see how that's working. Here we go. It's almost up. There we go, everybody. I think, I think, yeah, it's being live streamed on, on Facebook live. Okay, there we go. We are set to go with our Monday little get together, a Monday pop up. Boy, there are a lot of people waiting too. And Marjorie isn't even one of them yet. And she's in the other room. She likes to play coy. You know. Oh, there she is. Okay, let's bring all these people in, okay? Admit all, it says. Oh, look at that. There's Charlene Solis, and there's Mandy O'Brien, and there's Charlie Wallace, and there's Len, and there's Marjorie. And uh, there is uh, um, Andrew Deutsch, Francine White, and the ever popular Edward Berger. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. <We're... laughs> okay. And searchers have just sent me a reminder: you have enough points to buy a pair of sneakers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we had a wonderful day today. We got up and we went to my uh, my uh, what do we call it? My... It was three and a half hours, whatever it was. No, it wasn't three and a half hours. <laughs> we went to Mount Sinai. Oh, and we got there early. And, we got there at 11. He, everything was going very slow. And we said, <laughs> what the hell is going on they here? They put in new gear to make everything faster. You, you know, wait a minute. The, the, the point is, oh, we're, we just installed new a new system. Yeah, to make everything go faster. It, what, and this make everything go faster. Yeah. And this was the first day. And so uh, we didn't get out of there we, about an hour and a half. Actually, we got out of there about one, and we went in about one eleven thirty. And now Marjorie says she I have another vi visit in three months because this doctor uh, wants to make sure I'm okay. And As we all do. He says he wants to get a baseline for me. Yeah, which makes and then sense. He'll, then he'll go to like every six months or something. Yeah. But um, anyway, we're sitting, took took an hour and a half. All, you, all I got to do is draw some blood out of me, get me into the doctor, have him ask me a bunch of questions, and I'm out of there. Right? Nope. <laughs> and the doctor even apologized. He said, oh, they just were breaking in a new system today. And I went, didn't they hold like meetings on how to work this new system before you <laughs> you have it, everybody work into it? I mean, what's it's still at Mount Sinai Hospital, which is huge. Yeah. Well, Mount Sinai is not the hospital they used to be. I mean, they're just another mass money making operation right they all are yeah they all are so when they bring you your bill does the guy come with like two tablets from the top of the top <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 you're absolutely right and um, if you don't pay they light a burning bush in your room or something yeah. <laughs> or actually you go to the hospital if you have a burning bush and they well i they put me in a room and i i put some blood on the doorpost yeah <laughs> yeah that's yeah. the main diagnosis is burning bush yeah, yeah, but um, anyway, so that that was our that was our day today. It was an exciting day. It was something for Marjorie and I to do together. And she says now she's not going to my next visit. I can't. Which I will never <laughs> let her. Forget. I will never room. let her forget. Well, should we bring it up? Are you going to bring it up again? She I mean, brought it up. She brought this up just a few days ago with some friends. <laughs> She never lets go. How many years ago did this event take place? It was major, Alex. What? When did it happen? It happened after we went to China. No, after we no, went to Europe. No, after we went to Europe. Yeah. Are you sure of that, or wasn't I it? I had the surgery. Remember, that? I came home in a wheelchair. Well, didn't I help you all through Europe? Yes. The answer is yes. I was on crutches in. Yes, I was on crutches in. Huh? I was on crutches. I, I was taking care of myself. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Somebody had to push the wheelchair. You remember that? That was at the air, airplane. Remember how I picked you up from the hotel, almost carried you to the car. We got in it so I could show you Sienna. 
of the way you came up the car to the hospital and picked me up after my you see, that's, it all boils down to that huh yes i hate when mommy and daddy are too <laughs> it was a, a mm. major mistake that i'm not what gonna let go take, of. what is it gonna take you know i gotta say this and the women in the group here are gonna be very mad at me making this kind of statement oh. But women have a tendency to create a memory bank that they mm -hmm. and a, a bank like guys have a spank bank. You know what that is, guys. Right. <laughs> but uh, this is kind of a female spank bank, but it has to be with spanking your <laughs> your your mate. OK, so she takes this thing and she remembers it. And whenever there's an argument, what does she go back to? The time 3,000 years ago where I didn't pick her up at the hospital. After major surgery. After major surgery. Yeah. Yes. Oh, boy. I've explained it a million times. I'm not going to do it again here. It's getting no, very boring. No, the conversation. But every now and then, she will bring it up on this show. And I bring it up anytime I want. Uh, well, <laughs> I will never let you forget that you didn't well, you didn't come with me to the hospital when I had my kidney stone. I picked you up. <laughs> You're not going to win, Alex. So just stop. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. It's it's it's, it's set in stone. It's her. It's a, the one thing she's got against me. Because otherwise, I'm a pretty nice guy. You yes, know? you are. Yes, hmm? you are. I'm a pretty nice guy. Who is Chris Cat? Hmm. I'm wondering. He, he, he was week? here. He was here last week. Oh, was he really? Oh, yeah. Hey, Chris. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. See here. Chris Cat. Let's see if he's here. If it's yeah. not some kind of guy doing porn. <laughs> Alex, you were supposed to take notes on new names that you oh. have to remember. Well, I'll tell you. I'll let. I'll, I'll let you take a note, okay, Mandy. I'll make you. The, I already got enough to do. I, the, I, I'll make you the <laughs> recording you secretary of our thing. meeting. <laughs> Yeah. Secretary of the in fact, meeting. I, I can have you uh, write re, read back the minutes from this meeting. <laughs> well, nothing happened, and then nothing happened, and then nothing happened, and after that, well, nothing happened. Chris, are you there? What's taking Chris this long? Connecting to audio. I'm getting no. I'm getting. I'm getting suspicious. Uh -oh. he, he was here uh -oh. last week. He was here last week. Yeah. I don't remember Cat, but I remember a Chris. Yeah. Well, it might be Chris. I'm sure that's him. Yeah. Chris Cat. It was Cat. It, it was Cat Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, maybe oh. that's yeah. This is a maybe short name. Short now, you see, you should be the recording secretary. You remember <laughs> everything, Edward. Uh huh. And so, what did we do on our last show? Yeah. Uh. We talked about uh, Len the Frisco trip to Italy, and uh, yeah, your man about as good as mine is. Yeah, you're not sure. Chris Cat was a big fan of yours from uh, right, from, right. Uh, oh, yeah. okay, okay. Well, anyway, he's having trouble, I think, connecting to audio. Looks like yeah. or connecting. Period. <laughs> anyway, though, I can send him a note that says. Uh, but, 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 uh, I put put in waiting room and I say remove. There's something here where you can like uh, tell them, ask them to start video. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll ask them to start the video. Maybe that'll help. Anyway, so how are you all doing, friends? Now that I have a wife who's going <laughs> to come with me to my next appointment, perhaps. Perhaps. Literally having a crappy day. Huh? I said I'm literally. Having a crappy day. Are you really? Fixing really? the toilet. The pipe between my basement and my septic tank got clogged. And I got I had the fun of cleaning up a small mess in the basement as it backed up. Lovely. Well, actually the the what'd you call it? The the pipe between your basement and the septic tank. Kind of a sewer pipe. Oh, because there's no sewer, just a septic. But but to the septic, it's kind of a sewer. Yeah. See, I don't understand that. I, I was never a homeowner. I do know yeah. a big tank. So is when you live in the city, the pipes yeah. go out to a big sewer system. Mm. If you live where I do, everybody has their own processing thing in the backyard called a septic tank. 
I so, never ask where my dump goes, or and I and I don't really care. I like to follow mine. It's a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> I like to save it. Well, something yeah. so when you have a home and it's yeah. this big tank in which all this poop goes into, but, but eventually, if you a, if you poop enough, that's it. Well, you do have to have it cleaned out, but it's a process. So there's a tank, and then it gets aerated and pumped, and it degrades with bacteria and eat it. Yeah. yeah. So every every yeah. three to five years, you you have them come out yeah. and I'll write this down, it. Mandy. We talked about septic tanks. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you use the brown pen, the brown sharpie. Yeah. So I I I had to put on the the boots and use my shop vac to evacuate mm. and sanitize my the small area of the basement. Well, I caught it before it was real bad. Mm. What kind of guys have that job of just sucking poop out of a septic tank? They call it the it's it's a good job that pays well. Yeah. Yes, I would say that. better. It yeah, better. And, it's, and they're and they don't touch the stuff. They're they're yeah. good at it. They make a right. lot of money. Yeah, they do. There's a, there's a fellow on the internet who's really interesting who owns a business like that, and he does business advice and what's that? I can't think of his name, but he's really interesting. But, but every now and then, every every what twenty years or something or yeah. fifteen he, years, he, no, he tells a great story well, where they pulled into a Wendy's after they had done a job, and there's shovels that are used sometimes to break things up. Mm -hmm. And some guy saw the shovel in the back of his truck and reached in there and grabbed it and stole it. And as he was driving out, he was eating a hamburger with his bare hands. So <laughs> sometimes you get sometimes you get vengeance. You get vengeance for idiots because they're. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm waiting for a guy to show up with a jet, a water jet to clear the pipe. So, oh, boy. Yeah, wow. that's what happened. Yeah, I mean, this is an old, old reno, reno, reno house. I had no idea the pipe was was clogged when I, so. It's every five years or so, Alex. It can't go 20 yeah. years without that. How many years? Every, every five years or so? Yeah. Yeah. And what we do, you can put a beneficial bacteria in there that's constantly eating it, and then it's like every 10, 12 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's it's we don't have there's this then you don't have the tax for the city. But how do you know this be beneficial bacteria isn't going to eat your home? Because it's in the tank. <laughs> oh, okay. It's, in the tank. Yeah. it's separate from the house. Oh, I forgot. It's a beneficial bacteria. Yeah, it's beneficial. It's, it's beneficial. Okay. Yeah, you, you, it has benefits. It's probiotic. Sort of like friends with benefits, but friends. You don't own a home, do you? No, you you're like me and Marjorie. Yeah, I live in a big apartment building. Yeah. Yeah, you rent. Yeah, yeah. So somebody else can worry about the sewage. Do you ever ask where your sewage goes? Do you even care where your sewage goes? I don't goes? care. <laughs> it goes actually probably into the East River. Mm -hmm. No. It has... there's, there's a place right at 120 yeah, there's, there's, there's a whole documentary. The whole documentary oh, about the, New York sewer right system. Right near my old apartments, that was a sewage treatment plant. Yeah. It goes through a whole sewage treatment, and these cakes yeah. of stuff are left over, and they get so shipped go out to the river. So what, what? When they? Wait a minute. When? Uh, it, you're Mark writing this down, down, Amy. That's Amy. Mandy, not Amy. Amy left. <laughs> Amy left. <laughs> Somebody's gonna walk in the, to her and on her on her computer screen is going to go sewage. She's just got a big poop emoji on the screen, so she remembers. Where does the poop go? Yeah. The problem is, is that right now I am actually filling in for the person that's going to start next week. He's our investment property accountant. So right now I am dealing with all these invoices and there's one I just had was pump the septic tank. <laughs> really? Used to it. What were the you know? chances of that? I know. I know. Well, when y'all start my calculator up, up. like, oh my God, yeah. I yeah. Property management. It's not I was fun. thinking about you the other day because we were watching a show that takes place in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it the guy, the new show that's about yeah. the guy, the businessman that gets his stuff taken away? Yeah, it's a terrible show. The I was going to watch stupid. it. It's not good. No, no I, I thought it was no. Marjorie was looking forward to it. I thought it'd yeah. be William Daniels. Okay. Yeah. Jeff Daniels. He's and usually he's, great. Even his he's accent usually sucked great, in but it. it's. Did you watch it all yeah. the way to the end? Yeah. Yeah. What a horrible ending. I know. How many terrible show. It? Terrible show. Okay. Well, I'm not going to bother then. Yeah, don't. <laughs> you know. It, it, watching House of Cards. I'm still trying to get through House of Cards. 
That's a great show. House of Cards. Uh, yeah. I never watched it when it originally was on. So. That's a good show. It was a good show. It was yeah. a good show. And if you can, you know, stand Kevin Spacey, well, you can stand him because he's been found innocent of everything he's ever been charged with. So, yeah. 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 He's a good actor. I mean. He, he is, but he's not going to get the work anymore. I know. It, that's sad. It's, it's really sad. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, come on, the guy goes to court and he's found innocent, not only here in, I think it was Connecticut, but in England, where they had even more charges against him. He's found completely innocent. And do you see him suddenly having a series on Netflix? No. no. I mean, was there just people that were out to get him or something? I think, I got to tell you, I think he, he had the reputation of being a pretty unpleasant person. Just a creep. Anyways, and, and you get in trouble and they're going to make a big deal out of it. No one's yes. going to stick you know, up for him. Nobody's going to stand up for you. Nobody's going to go out of their way for you, even if you're totally innocent. Right. You know, so that's the problem he had. The thing that got me was the show, this the premise that he was from South Carolina and was a Democrat. And they even made a comment like this, like a couple of episodes. I'm on season four. He finally even made reference to that because I always thought that was funny. I'm like, he's South Carolina and he's a Democrat. Like what? Yeah, where did that go? This, but the way he does that accent, and I think he even, like, in private, his accent's not quite as strong. But when he's, when they're showing him out in public, mm -hmm. he's got that drawl, you know, that's, and I'm like, that's probably true. I bet there's a lot of politicians that do that. They thicken their drawl when they get out there politicking. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Kennedy from Louisiana yeah, does not John Kennedy. Like that. Yeah. in private yeah wait a minute now chris cat chris cat where's your oh there you are there, is he? there oh, he is. how are you doing you were having i was having audio trouble there yeah well you're not now so you're doing just fine how are you Great. doing and john ewan has joined us as well well we have quite a crew here and paul is not calling today but she's got a dentist. Got the dentist yeah and uh you know, and if anybody else wants to call and you don't have a phony name, we'll, uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> you know, hmm? well, um, you know, a lot of us don't want the FBI beating down our door for saying the wrong thing. Um, so just one thing to clear up. I think last week you looked me up on the Internet and you assumed I was somebody in Philadelphia or uh, that went to Villanova. There's a lot of people with my name. Catalano is a very common name. It actually means Smith in Italian. And, um, <laughs> and and um, and I I just want to clear that up. I have nothing to do with these people in Philly. These Italians in Philly, they they call their spaghetti sauce gravy, and I don't I don't talk to them. I don't have anything to do with them. I wish the man well, but that's well, not in every mobster movie I've ever seen about New York mobsters, they call it gravy too. And you know how what? They, how you know what? I come from a clean family. Oh, okay. Okay. You got nothing. You got nothing on us. My my dad was an aerospace engineer in California, um, from Queens, no, no doubt. The greatest cooking lesson for people in the history of movies was when uh, what's his name tries to teach Michael how you cook the meatballs and the spaghetti and all of that when he's you know when he's cooking for these guys who hit the Luca Brazzi, huh? Luca Brazzi, I think his name Luca was. Luca Brazzi, yeah. Luca Brazzi, you're right. An important you're cultural good. benchmark, of course. Huh? An important cultural benchmark, of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, so if, uh, I have something that I've been thinking about that might be of use to your the legions of audience, the, your vast audience. The you mean three, the three people that watch this? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, um, well, you know what's happening is um, I've, I've had two electric cars. I'm on my side. I'm actually on my third. And um, a lot of people are thinking about. You know, the batteries can wear. They can can wear out. You don't have to replace them. You just plug in, or so you don't have to get a new car every time. <laughs> Unless the ashtrays are full. <laughs> that was the roundabout one, but I got that one. Yeah, my That's father cool. used to use that joke. You know something? Well, you know the ashtrays would be full in my car. <laughs> a long time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Um, okay, no, no, no. I just thought, hey, you know what? Because I don't see these things discussed. I think everyone's theoretically in favor of the electric car. I love them and hate them at the same time. 
Um, right now I have the Mustang uh, Mach-E, which is a like electric Mustang, which is a luxury car. It's a luxury car. It's a muscle car. It is fantastic. The power is dangerous. How many miles do you get on that thing? Well, I'll tell you. And thank you for asking. Let's. I'll tell you. Um, in a, in warm weather, I get up. This I have the smallest battery. See, we forgot about that's not how big the battery. It's what you do with it. Okay. I have the smallest battery. <laughs> it's, it's it's um, it's two hundred and twenty five mile capacity on a warm day, but on a cold day, which in California we call a cold day below sixty five. Um, I know we're pussies. I know. Um, the um, on a cold day, about one hundred and seventy five to one hundred and eighty five capacity, and that's all I can drive on that. But um, there are a lot of issues, and um, so I can uh, you know give people some tips and so forth. If you're thinking about getting one in New York, for example, um, I just wouldn't I wouldn't do it unless you're getting a Rivian, which can perform very well in the cold, cold temperature. That company is based in Colorado, and so they've adapted their cars to cold temperature. Those are mostly, mostly trucks and SUVs. And um, by the way, for those cars, you can buy those phony testicles that go on the back of the car, and when it's the weather's that cold, they shrink. That's an, an, inter, an important, that's a great, grand idea. <laughs> Would you lend your name to a product if we decided to develop something? Sure, like go that? right ahead. It would have to be a man who knows about shrinking balls. I'm sure there. If I not, think every man. I think every man in this group knows about shrinkage. So, <laughs> ba <laughs> um, so back to the 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 basics. Okay. So, okay. First tip. Maybe I'll meet them out over time because we don't want to make the whole show about the electric car. But it is a yes, we really don't. Topic. <laughs> what did you say, Marjorie? <laughs> yes, we really don't. <laughs> okay, okay. So I'll just give you the one first tip. Okay, if you're gonna get an electric car, get a really long extension cord. Like a <laughs> I got him. Okay. Yeah, that's I one thing we forgot about these cars. You know, when you get if you live in a cold area, like let's say you live in Wisconsin. You're, you're really out of luck in the winter. I mean, it gets stick too cold for those batteries to operate. Right, yeah. and plugging the damn thing in outside, and mostly I use the the public fast chargers. We'll talk about that sometime. Plugging it no. in outside in the miserable <laughs> weather doesn't always work out. And, and um, But anyways. But I don't know if everybody wants to talk about this. Okay, that's cool. I don't. You like you like the bit don't about. Bo don't bother my wife. You don't want to know why you need a long extension. <laughs> Don't mind my wife. Okay, friend. moving on. Okay, moving on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Francine, how are you doing? We haven't gotten into a real discussion with you the last couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just um, catching up on. I watched. Um, well, I convinced someone to watch Breaking Bad recently. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Right. If you haven't seen Breaking Bad, see it. Here's how we watch Breaking Bad. We. Decided we would watch it to see. We watched one episode and didn't get into it. So Marjorie and I yeah. just let's do another one. We did another mm -hmm. one. Well, mm -hmm. let's do another mm -hmm. one. Before mm -hmm. we, knew it, we were through with the first season. Now I know. we decided we liked the show, but the show was coming to an end in about two weeks. So we had to get through all what six seasons or something. Yeah. And we, the the, yeah. the the night before the last yeah. episode, we finished the last episode that was the whole well, season minus that yeah. episode and it was the only episode we had to watch with commercials right mm -hmm. oh right and it changed right. the whole dynamic for us it mm -hmm. does it does because it flows better when you can yeah. just watch it yeah. too yeah. yeah but um but and uh good show. yeah I, I love that show and uh i was watching hacks hacks you know hacks. Yes. Have you seen we that? Saw it. Yeah. We've been watching it. Sort of like based on Joan Rivers, I guess. It's, it's good show. No. It's good yeah. show. No. It's, it's kind of based on Joan Rivers. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I kind would say closer yeah. to Joan Rivers than anybody else. Mark. Yeah. If yeah. this famous... is the first time you're watching it, Francine, you should watch the first two seasons. No, no, no. I, I saw the first two seasons. But, you know, you forget, like, there's so much time with these shows. There's so much time in between that you just forget what happened. Do you know but, who uh, that girl is on the show, don't you? The woman girl. You know who uh, not, not Jean Smart, the the, the other, other the other one. I yeah. Um 
she's Lorraine Newman's daughter. Okay. Saturday All right, that, that just ring a bell. Okay, wow. She's very good too. She's, she's very good. good. Yeah. Uh, you know, but it's a, it's a very good show. So. Yeah, I haven't seen the Seinfeld movie though. Has anybody seen that? We liked yeah, it. We did. Frosted. Absolutely. Yeah. Loved. Loved it, but, yeah. it, but it's getting yeah. bad reviews. And it I is, but why. anybody else see it? I, I did. What? You well, saw it? What did you think? I, I was entertained. I didn't think it was great, but I there was. Well, but it was if you weren't, if you yeah. aren't at least forty something years old, I could see you not. <laughs> the not the movie makes because, no sense at all. Yeah, the references are so seventies and eighties. Mm -hmm. Actually, I should say, if you're not 50 years old, you, you'll right. miss about a third of the humor in it. If you're 50 or older, it's pretty funny. But the best cameo of all time has to be John Hamm, and I'm forgetting the other actor's name, recreating their roles for Mad Men. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Yeah, there was that Sarah Cooper was pretty good in it, too. She was that she, the, she was that one that did all those voicing Trump things during yeah. the pandemic. Yeah, I think that if you She's are talented. if you are our age, it was full of laughs because it was yeah. all stuff that you could relate to. It was mm -hmm. all referenced, yeah. The milkman and the cereal brands and yeah, yeah. So you're right. It was a good, it was a good show, good show. I can I, I like the movie. It's not yeah. great, you know. It's not incredible, but it's uh, we watched it. And we enjoyed it. Huh? Yeah, it's enjoyable. Hmm? You know. So. Um, and, and uh, got Melissa McCarthy in it's got to be good, huh? So it's got Melissa McCarthy in she it. She actually is very good in this. She's very everyone good. that's in there. Every and it's loaded with comedians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it was loaded with his favorite comedians. Yeah, you know. Well, uh, but it it, uh, it it just it worked, and it was I thought it was sweet and fun and all other kinds of things. Uh, anybody else watch anything that we started watching an old Canadian sitcom that I watched years ago called Corner Gas that's light and funny. It's, it's really worth watching. Really? What's it called? Corner Gas. You got the comedian Brent Butts, the, the writer. Yeah. The small town in Saskatchewan, and he runs the gas station, and there's a diner connected to it. I just can't imagine anything coming out of uh, Canada as being funny. Oh, it's... it is. Oh, SCTV. SCTV. Letter, SCTV. SCTV. Yeah. You're Letter right. Kenny. You're right. The best. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Yeah, there's, there's, the there's, best. there's, there's, there's <laughs> this, this is a, a, there's nothing controversial about it. It's just well written humor. The first couple episodes are slow and then you, you get into it. But it's fun. It's good to have on the background when I'm working. I wish Mike Chisholm here. I, we're here. I give him a bad time about Ken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They threw him out. Huh? Too much Letterman talk. They threw him out. Hey Brian, how you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Uh, Adrian had her last uh, competition of the year, her season, and uh, she got what some high nice pole dancing competition. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when she gets old enough, I'm going to tell her about all this stuff. So, uh, yeah. So she got that, and she uh, then she got another scholarship. She got a scholarship paid for a full scholarship for next year, so she doesn't have to pay going oh, through. So. Full scholarship to what? For that's the it. for the competition convention yeah, for next those year. Those are not free. Yeah. So they. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Car payments. She so, really yeah, so, her She really loves her doing her dancing, doesn't she? Oh yeah, of course. Yep, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so so that was good. It was a good weekend. Real busy with her, but yeah, it's good. Did you guys sign the contract with TLC for the reality show yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> I saw that on Facebook, Brian. She looks. Oh, really thanks. In those yeah. things, yeah. It's on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Good. We all have Facebook. We have. We we put our stuff in our families yeah. and things going on in our lives. Yeah. You never want to check is, it out. Well, guess what? This is going out on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but I, I didn't realize you put up these pictures of your daughter dancing. Uh, Marjorie does. Marjorie replies all the time. Yeah. You watch her, Marjorie? Yeah. How, how is she dancing? It's adorable. She's great. Yeah. Yeah, and then then they have so you know they they have her solos on the first day on Friday, and then she got she got good marks, and then they do uh, the team stuff on Saturday with with like different classes, you know, tap and jazz and hip hop classes. 
And then uh, they're one of their big teams. They, they got invited to go to the closing ceremony. So the closing ceremony has everybody there, all the families and everything. And then they only they only invite a couple teams to dance. So their team got picked to dance for that. Oh, so that's lot, wonderful. Yeah, so it was a lot of fun. So That's great. Yeah. Proud yeah. dad, huh? Yeah, yeah. So it was a good, good weekend. How so, old is she now? Huh? How old oh, is she she's now? eight. Yeah, eight. Eight. Um, this kind of makes up for not being single anymore, right? <laughs> I have my single fun, fun times. <laughs> so now I'm having different fun times. <laughs> oh, boy. He, he he became a father late in life, or later in life, I would say. How old were you? 40, 48. 48. 48. But you were ready to have one, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it made you yeah, I made you a better father than if you had done this at you know twenty two or twenty three. Yeah, yeah, I was not ready for a kid then for sure. Yeah, huh? I was a daddy, but I was a lot of a lot of girls' daddies. <laughs> <laughs> you were a what? You know, like who's your daddy? He's a sugar daddy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you don't have you don't have any other kids, do you? No, 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 no. That's what he knows, though. No, 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 no. Don't say that. I hate to say that. I was friends. I was friends with all my ex-girlfriends after. So I I kept that way just to make sure. Nine months, then no more friends. After I tried to remain nine months after you break up. You're, yeah. you're in that DNA testing business, so you would probably know if uh... well, I tried to remain <laughs> friends with all my ex-girlfriends, but they wouldn't let me. So <laughs> But it's uh, well, Lord, I, but, uh, Marjorie always has. A, if I am a friend with an ex girlfriend or I communicate with them, she immediately says something nasty about them. Only one. <laughs> Only one. Only one. And you don't even know her. Well, I mean, that, like, I'd write the other one. <laughs> yeah, you, you, go, you go, oh, she's ugly or she. And my ex wife gained a lot of weight. I never said anything about it. A lot ever. of weight. I mean, she actually threw the sun, um, the the Earth <laughs> off its axis. <laughs> oh no! And um, uh, she, you always bring that up. You always bring that up. I mean, at one time, she looked like Elizabeth Taylor. The and only one I bring like up is the one that I bring up. What? The only one I bring up is the one I bring up. Yeah. The one you bring up, or you mean the one that used to call the show here? Did she? Oh, yeah. 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 Can we go back to electric cars? <laughs> <laughs> I, that's, you know what? Poor, that It's sometimes considered poor taste to discuss your exes. But you know what? Let's do it. Let's it's do more it. poor taste okay. to talk about I electric cars. This. Well, I get along <laughs> with most of my exes. I mean... You know, if I had to talk Same to here. them, if I called them, they would pick up the phone. Let me put mm -hmm. it there. You know, uh, I don't think I had a bad relationship with uh, any of them. I'm trying to think. How about my first wife? Well, I don't know what happened to her. I, you know, she disappeared off the face of the earth. But Was that Susan? No, no. Susan was no. my, my uh, third wife. <laughs> my second wife was Ronnie. Who a lot of people know because she used to call it. He talked to me on the nighttime show, and then she had she had she died a few years back. Mm -hmm. and then, um, then then it was Ron, it's Susan, and then it was uh, the lovely and attractive Marjorie, and I don't know who the fifth one's going to be yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're coughing. Oh boy! If I keep making jokes like that. I'm going to have to go looking for her pretty fast. <laughs> do, you, do you dream at night? Do you remember what your dreams are? Huh? I do. Do you like when you dream at night? Do you remember your dreams or anything? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I usually some of them. I have an ongoing dream because my ex husband is in my dream almost every night. Oh my god! Ex husband oh, really? is in your dream almost every night. Yes. Of him? I would some think at a certain point you would just get him out the hell out of your dream. You would yeah. think. As, uh, does, your I, new, does your new boyfriend know that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> does he? I mean, well, I get a lot. can do about it. <laughs> right. 
right. Well, I mean, you could traumatize a woman to that level. I'm impressed. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, well, I was going to say that I get along with my ex-husband, but I don't ever talk to him. We just don't talk all the time. I mean, why, I'll go why would you weeks even, without thinking about him, but okay. he's you get only along. when I... Yeah, but you get along with him, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? As your ex-husband. Mm -hmm. Or for anything, the sake of the children, although they're now... Right. Well, I mean, I get well. but it was amicable divorce, you know. Amicable was... divorce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why would you dream with of him? Yeah. I, the only thing I could think of is just that I knew him for 32 years. I mean, like pretty much my whole adult life, yeah. I was with him. So a long time. Yeah. Did you ever yeah. dream of me, Marjorie? All the time. <laughs> really? Nightmare. Yes. You're it's lying. Dream. You're in every wonderful dream. Smothering uh, you with a pillow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> You know what? If he, if a man kept you happy for that long, he's a better man than I. I'm impressed. Cool. Did he keep uh, you happy for that me. long? There must have been some day he wasn't. Are you talking to me? Yes. Yes, yes you. Yes, you. I would say the, like the last ten years was me. So, I finally just. So yeah. I've got a happy ex story. <laughs> So yeah. my ex was on the road to becoming an attorney. Thankfully, she didn't become an attorney before the marriage was over or what I, or whatever, what we call the marriage. And not only that, she, so when she took the bar, she couldn't <laughs> pass the California bar and was forced to go 5,000 miles to take the bar in Washington and Oregon. So that meant that when we split up, she had to get way far away from me. And, I, and that makes me very, very lucky because the woman, incredibly beautiful, very irresistible woman. And the only thing, it was probably the hand of God that she had to be stuck in Washington and Oregon where it made it impossible for her to really try and litigate against me. Okay, but you you said that she was uh, uh, very beautiful and irresistible. Absolutely, and uh, and uh, she had and, her own issues, which I really don't care to discuss. So her but, stick, um, her stick. <laughs> we're around. friends to this day, but we're just long distance friends. But how did you ever get? Did you ever get together? Um, we talk, but not in forty years. If you got within proximity of each other. It would, be oral sex. it would be oral sex all night and day. And and I don't mean just talking about it. So it's probably better to keep that distance because I'm falling in love, but in love with somebody that's local. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm falling in love with somebody that's okay. So you're falling in love with somebody local. That's but I right. I say this woman suddenly pops back into your life. Hey. Uh, it's impossible. I can't even date a woman in West Hollywood, even though it's full of beautiful women down there. You see, with the way traffic patterns are in Los Angeles, you really, a woman becomes more attractive. For, so for example, an 11 in West Hollywood, to me, up here in Calabasas is more like an eight, right? Because the travel time, the distance, the commute is very, very difficult. Maybe you'll meet somebody in an electric charger or something. You know what? <laughs> hey, it's funny you should mention that. I met somebody at the damn post office in Agora Hills, which is the next town up from Calabasas. Now, this woman, not only is she geographically desirable, been in Playboy the whole thing, geographically desirable, she's actually very convenient. And I can and I said to her, you know what, babe? I just want you to know that you're very convenient. What well, was being very convenient? She call doesn't, me, call she me doesn't right. know your rack. Well, Laura Hills is what basically, I, I can get to her, I can get to her place in basically seven minutes up to 101. Okay. And that, to that's me, a that's a very, very touching, right. that's a very touching commute. Okay. Because you, I'm telling you what's going on in LA, the 101 and the 405, just to get, you know, I don't want, I don't have to get into it. If you ever saw the Saturday Night Live sketch, on the Californians, where they spend the whole party talking about the route that they take took to get to the party. That's what I'm talking about. I finally met a woman within a 10 minute commute, and I think I'm falling in love. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All you need to not happen is for your ex to come back. I, I think it's. I think I need to discipline myself and not not let her know that I'm really falling in love. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If the if the sex was that good. Which at your age is probably a more important factor than anything else. Okay. Why didn't it stay together? 
Okay, you're talking about my ex. Yeah. My ex said she had issues that could that she's still dealing with today that I don't want to discuss. Okay. Um, you know, I just don't want to, but this is just something that is still. Yeah, but it's just amazing to me. You know, I, what I said to Marjorie, and this is very true. The the marriage, marriages at different points in your life are different from the marriages before. Yeah. Because you were different. You know, the kind of marriage I had in the very beginning was just because, well, the first marriage was because she got pregnant and I did the right thing and married her. And then on our wedding night, she had a miscarriage, which is the story of my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so that, forget that one. But you were a mensch in that one, man. You were a mensch. At that time, in that place, you were a mensch. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some kudos for that. Oh, yes, of course. I'm a wonderful. You may have been a, I'm a just fool too, but right, you right, Vernon. You know I am, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but uh, that's a I'm valiant still, I'm still on, of valor. I'm, still, I'm, I'm still on my first, and it's coming up on 51 years. Wow! Wow! wow. Uh, you know, nice. we, we go wow because he did something right. You know, I mean, I wish it had been that way with me, but uh, I was never meant to be. But I told Marjorie <laughs> that probably the marriage we have is the most realistic. Being old and getting married late in life to somebody, yeah. um, it, it's it, it's probably my <laughs> most successful marriage. Yeah, we take you know. care of each other. Huh? He's my best buddy. Yeah, best buddy? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. The companionship is companionship when you're older. Now who do you want? It's who you want sitting across the dinner table, too, don't you think? That's my big issue. Well, yeah, when you're younger, it's who you want under the dinner table. Oh, <laughs> I'll tell you something. No, oh! don't, don't, no, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. That's right. Part of the reason I'm in Los Angeles, the place. How is old are you? Sure. How old are you, Chris? I'm, well, I'll tell you what. I am, I'm, I'm younger than George Clooney. And older than Brad Pitt, and that's all I'm going to say. You're going to go have to Google all that stuff, right? <laughs> it's not worth it. Somebody, I didn't ask you, how many, but that's good. Just give up and move on. Yeah, I feel like I'm 25 years old, and that's what's important to me. Well, However, we, if I hit on 25 year old women, that's a different. They, they, they. I, I begin to realize I'm not 25. Yeah, but I mean, what I'm saying is um, to begin with. You should never worry about telling people how old you are. Yeah. As a matter okay. of fact, I was told, who told me that you should actually tell people that you're older than you really are? I'm 109. Then they say, I'm Gee, he looks great for his age. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But if you try to say you're younger than you really are, they go, boy, he looks terrible, doesn't he? <laughs> you know? So it's better if you lie. But you lie, make yourself older. You know, for years, uh, Sean Connery always played older because he knew he would have a career longer when he did that. And he did. He always played it. If you ever noticed, Sean Connery, except for the Bond stuff, yeah. always played older. He was very happy to not wear a hairpiece, you know, if need be. So, yeah. He was great. He was. Yeah. Well, he, he was, was the... Uh, what you call it? The uh, ideal man, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had a he yeah. had certain wonderful qualities. Uh, but uh, my favorite guy, though, for man's man was Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> the other day. Okay. Alex Bennett is still alive. <laughs> I miss Gilbert, you know? Yeah. I just miss him. And every day, People are beginning to realize what a brilliant comedian he was. Yeah. And, um, and I think Norm MacDonald a little bit also. Yeah. Oh, he was the best. Yeah. He grew I was listening to a pod best. Yeah, I was listening to some comedians' podcasts, and they were talking about they did put in much work, but his storytelling and stuff, creating stuff was really good. He was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I never got into Norm MacDonald until towards the end of his life. And then I started to say, gee, he's great. And they dropped dead, of course. <laughs> now, all I have to watch is the stuff that already exists. And I go back and watch some of it, and it's wonderful. 
Mm -hmm. just wonderful it's inventive it's you know it comes from somewhere that nobody else draws material you know and, and then really after after oj died they started showing all the stuff from his saturday night live uh <laughs> stuff and he was just relentless it was so hysterical yes he yes. got fired for that yeah, he yeah. got fired yeah, got because fired dick ebersall who was running saturday night live at the time I don't think it was Lorne Michaels at that time. It was, uh, it was. Or, or he was the head of the network and, Ebers and uh, Lorne was was producing the show. Uh, he was good friends with OJ and he didn't like yeah. the OJ jokes. So he fired him. Wow. Nice. Yeah. He still got off a lot of them. I need to go. I need to go get my uh, my little dancing queen. So. Uh, <laughs> bye, Brian. That's so adorable, bye, and it's wonderful bye. at this point in life. You got something like that going for you. Yeah. Okay. No talking bad about me when I leave, Mandy. Thank you. Right. <laughs> I'm not singing Dancing Queen. That's what got me singing. Uh, Brian, you're up in Almaden, right? Okay. There he goes. Uh, he's gone. Yeah. He's gone. Yeah. So anyway, uh, um, let me see what else is happening. Nothing much is happening, is it? Is it life is boring, Marjorie? Life is boring. Well, we 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 have the wherewithal. Now we're trying to figure out where we're going to go on vacation. A cruise. We're going to go on a small boat cruise. But what oh. was it? Oh, my my doctor today was giving travel advice. Don't use Viking. Don't use Viking. He said. <laughs> I'm going on a cruise in two weeks. Great. Right. Yeah. Where? To um, the Caymans and Cozumel. Oh, oh nice. what shipping yeah. line? It's the smallest ship that Royal Caribbean has. So how many grandeur, of the, grandeur of the seas, maybe brilliance. Yes. How many people? The, like that? the grandeur of the seas. Yeah, grandeur holds about uh, twenty five hundred. I think. Oh, God. We're looking at about <laughs> three hundred or less. Yeah. Well, if we find three hundred or less, you don't get like all the services you want. I I've been told. Do they have the little stores that are open? You don't get the the cabaret night. Right, you're not going to have a casino and all of that shit. Exactly. Yeah. I don't want any of that. But right. Uh, but look, you're going to do. You're going to do your. Told, own. I've been told, and correct me if I'm wrong, Lynn. Uh, if you're on a cruise, and let's say there are 1,500 people on the cruise, yeah, it doesn't feel like that. No, no, it doesn't. I've but, been on what 9,000 people. Oh God. <laughs> Did it have you know, a Ferris wheel? It had all of that. It had the big, the, the what do you call it, the water slides and all that stuff. And isn't yeah. a water slide on a yeah. ship redundant? Yeah. Well, <laughs> my, my problem with those size ships is not the size of the ship; it's all the goddamn kids that are running around on it. Well, <laughs> you don't these, go where the kids are. You go where the no kids. No kids. Yeah. yeah. Well, I which, never what? saw a single kid on that cruise. Seven days. Yeah, because I, I was throwing them overboard. <laughs> on the, the news there's a new you just moved the water slide there. over a little yeah, yeah. you could go on that yeah. nude, nude cruise uh Lee Flynn. i don't think there'll be any kids on that one yeah yeah <laughs> or, are you, you, Mandy, when you get to cozumel if you see my friend jose tell him i said hi but we can't figure <laughs> out where to go that's the problem just, we just have. yell out jose somebody will answer i've heard <laughs> the cruises to, to uh iceland are incredible are, are you wanting to do a Europe, a European river cruise, something like that? We're checking on that too. Yeah, there's. I'll tell you, Europe. But he was, says, Europe "Don't take." He says, country. "Don't take Viking." He says, "Yeah, there's nothing but bad stuff about Viking." Well, I've got all huh. those other boats. All the raping and pillaging those Vikings do. There, what, yeah, what, there's, there's, what what, there's, what uh, boat did he tell us to take that wasn't Viking? Oh, the one that I was talking What's about. What's it called? Volk. V o v u l k or the Volk? Oh. Never heard of it. Hmm. Talk, T-A-U-C-K. Well, you have it right there. Yeah, I've got the... I've got the Show us a picture of the boat. Show us a picture of the boat. Well, it's just a picture of Europe. Hold on. It's not Wait. in this little one. It's in oh. the big one somewhere. Oh, I think because the boat sank and it's... Uh... <laughs> one of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Charlene, you ever taken a cruise? No, I never have. Ever wanted yeah. to? Um, I've thought about it, but my husband would never go. I mean, he won't I, even go on an airplane. He won't go on a boat. 
He won't yeah. go on it. Right. Maybe that would be more fun to go without him, though. No, my, my, <laughs> yeah. 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 my friend Shecky, who used to be here on the show before he died, uh, always took cruises. He loved yeah, he taking did. cruises. He would go out of his way to take a cruise. I mean, yeah. he's the one that advised me, don't go to Antarctica. Penguin shit smells terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the, the person I'm going on the cruise with is my boyfriend. He loves cruises. He so what? I like he, him already. He <laughs> loves cruises. So I was telling, my mom was asking me, she said, will he ever want to go anywhere else, you know, besides a cruise and I, or, you know, we all ever go anywhere else. I said, well, we might, yeah, we'll go camping. And she goes, I was, I was talking about Paris. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> Paris. Nothing, but it was just like, I was saying, oh, well, yeah, we'll go camping. We'll do it. And she was like, no, I was talking about like Paris, like overseas or something. I was like, okay. Yeah, we're also I can't talking about Paris in a second, like a but I don't want to go right now because of the Olympics. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're saying Europe this year is going to be absolutely nuts. Just Why? Over, overlo overloaded with people because of the Olympics and because of the pandemic being over for real. And I mean, you're even Italy this year, when we were there two weeks over the last two weeks, was inundated with people. And this is the early part of the season. They're saying yeah. by summer, the place is going to be shut down. It's going to wow. be so much, fun, you know, so. Wow. You got to be careful um, when you go. Um, Where were you in Italy again? Uh, Capri, Sorrento, Siena. Siena. Uh, Amal I take Marjorie back to Siena. I made a deal with her. You made a yeah, deal. Rome, um, uh, Florence, Florence? Uh, Pisa, the Cinque Terre. I mean, it was just. Oh, Cinque Terre is my favorite. We went to Cinque Terre. Oh my yeah. God! I mean, I yeah, I, we just got back yesterday evening, and uh, I'm still nine hours. I'm ready to fall asleep here, but yeah. um, it was the most amazing two weeks I've ever spent in my life. It was it was perfect. We ac accidentally fell on Cinque Terre, didn't we? No, 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 no. Where Arthur and I used to go to the restaurant, Italian restaurant. Now where the where where he used to live, they told me. And that's how we got well, the We were kind of ad-libbing our trip at that point. And we were just mm. driving around Italy. And we, and so we were in Siena, and now we were going somewhere else. And we wound up in Cinque Terre, and it was wonderful. No, but they I had mean, told me Cinque Terre. It's, it's five villages. That's what Cinque but is. we've been there. Right? Yeah. And, and yeah, and it's just, I mean. We don't mean any crazy. racial comments about Chinese people. It's called Cinque <laughs> Terre. <laughs> no. It was, we took the boat there and took the train back, and it was just, it was fabulous. What a day. Yeah. 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 It's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Hey, Mandy, can I ask, do they have cruise ships that go up the Seine in Paris? Do they really go up that way? I believe they do. Yeah. There are boats that go up the Seine, if I'm not mistaken. The little bateau yeah. mouches that go up the Seine, but with a guy with a gun. Small boats, small river boats. I, mean, I, don't... I think the Seine goes all the way south. Yeah. yeah but they're small river boats. They're not big boats. Yeah, this, and, and Alice, the other thing I wanted to say about Europe, just very quickly, like is ah! oh, bless, bless you, bless you. Ah! Thank <laughs> bless you. you. I uh, I ate my body weight in pasta and, and and pizza and all that stuff, and I ended up losing weight when I got home because we walked so much there, and the food is fresh. There's no shit in that stuff. It's pasta is is uh, you know an egg and flour. And a pinch of salt, and that's it. And it's wonderful. I felt I feel better now than I have in years from not eating all the shit I've been eating for the last sixty years. It's well, amazing. I, make, I asked uh, you remember what, Stillman, right, the diet guy, yeah, uh, who came up with the uh, the Stillman diet, which is the all carb diet. Mm -hmm. Was that his name? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And I knew him. He used to do my show, and mm. I noticed I went to I think it was Spain. And I ate like there was no tomorrow. I mm -hmm. you know, and I figured I'd go home, and when I got home, I would weigh at least ten pounds more than when I left. Yeah, I weighed ten pounds less. Yeah, I asked him I what that was all about, and he said, "We don't know why that happens, but people do go to Europe, they do eat a lot, and they come back, and they've lost weight." He says it has something to do 
with the soil in which the food is grown. The lack of you processed know, chemicals in uh, the food. Was, There's was no that, chemicals in it. Was that a all carb, a high carb diet or a low carb diet? The low carb diet. Low carb diet, right, right. Because your body, which you, I'm doing that now, you put your body into ketosis and it's, it, there's no more carb for it to grab. So it starts I did it back. a while back and I lost 60 pounds. There you go. Uh, there since you go. I had an operation and things like that, I've kind of stopped and I've gained about half of that back, you know. Yeah, right. I, I lost 160 pounds on. I don't look that wow. fat now, do I, Marjorie? From when I, yeah. yeah. But still, yeah. you know, it's it kind of gets hard when you're when suddenly they're giving you medicines to take and things like that. You know, you're going to gain. Did you hear what Andrew said? Mm -hmm. I lost Andrew? I lost 160 pounds on the low carb diet. Mm -hmm. That's a whole person. I what lost 140 it? pounds on a low carb carb diet. I lost, it worked. I lost 140 okay, pounds when I got the board. Andrew, you have to show us the picture <laughs> of what you were when. I'm Here, waiting hold on, I'll, I'll pull I it up. Oh, oh, you, oh, you showed us that one. Okay, go. Mandy, once again, Andy, you got taken. Andy's got to go. Bye, Mandy. Bye, Mandy. Bye, Mandy. Bye. Bye. Oh, uh, and, uh, so, so uh, Alex, so I... Um, so I did go on a Viking cruise, and I got to tell you, there's not one damn Viking on the damn ship. There was no <laughs> purging going on. There was no <laughs> I, I want my money. I stood up there with my fur and my shield and my battle axe. Nothing, you know, because I'd been on the Star Trek theme. Look cruise. at that photograph. That I've been on the Star Wars. Wow! Theme. Oh theme. my I God! Well, I love it. the Viking. Wow. I love the Viking cruises. It was the raping and pillaging part that got old. Oh my <laughs> God! That's you. Look at how wow. how much you two weigh there. 365 about. Wow. Yeah. You saved your awesome. life. That yeah. is awesome. Wow, that's great. I thought I'd shown that before. Yeah, yeah, you, you did. You, you have, did it yeah. on Facebook, yeah. I think. I saw it. Yeah. There's another, there's another one that's yeah. Oh yeah, here's another one. Oh my oh. god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was a big boy. Well, one day, big. one day you Did just you? Say, said to yourself, "I'm going to diet," and I'll tell you, low carb diets. The reason they're so great, in my opinion, is that they're easy to stay on. Yeah, you don't really have to starve yourself. It's Thanks. it's binary, yes or no. Can you eat what? it? Can't eat it. I mean, you can eat any fish, meat, poultry, eggs, all no carbs, veggies. Bacon and eggs in the morning, mm -hmm. no carbs. The only it's the only diet with approved cannibalism, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> now, then, then people cheese. people said to me, "Well, you know that diet's not supposed to be good for you." And I said, "What's not good about losing sixty pounds?" Yeah, yeah. you want to see mine? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh oh, oh There's my before, god! Can you see it before and after? Holy! Oh, get oh, it up! Oh, wow! Oh, my god. Are you, <laughs> Darlene? How big were you? I was almost three hundred pounds. Oh Holy moly! Wow! Yeah. How long Am ago? I? Um, twenty. I started uh in twenty day after Mother's Day, twenty twenty two. I started. Oh wow! Well, you look two terrific. years ago. You were that big. Mm hmm. Wow. wow. And how'd you do it? Low carb? Low carb, low okay. sugar, uh, low fat, high protein. Hmm. Do you do time restricted eating? Like intermittent no. fasting? Just eat three no. minutes a day, four or five, whenever mm -hmm. you want? Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. And my that my was inspiration was, was on, a, on an airplane. Thank you. I had a 16 hour flight and blew the seat out of a pair of pants in the first hour. Oh, crotch, shit. crotch to waist. Oh, and, God. And, a, and the pants had a 48 inch waist. Oh. And they were too tight. And it was all, it was coming from India. So I had all these people pointing and, oh, the fat man's butt is showing. It was a oh. <laughs> I came home and said, that's enough. That's yeah. it. Well, oh, we had quite a few people leave us today. <laughs> the little show we lost. Uh, what's the name? Uh, Vernon, huh? Vernon, Vernon yeah. dropped. She all of a sudden, he left us. I don't know why, but Vernon, uh, we we want to thank you for having called this program. Uh, it's amazing. This is a, so really between you and Charlene, 
You've thrown the planet off its axis <laughs> by losing all that. That's weight. amazing, Charlene. I always had a feeling yeah. when, when, I, when I lost like 60 pounds, somewhere else on the earth, somebody gained it. <laughs> it was probably me. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if I lost we, mine. We haven't even I talked to Spot, Spot Boddicker. Scott Boddicker today. Hi, Scott. Hey. Oh. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Speak I'm now, here. Scott. Yeah. What? Speak, Speak now. No, nah, I got I got nothing to say. I've been I'm amazed by the weight loss. I've been trying myself yeah. a little bit. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, once you once you get into it, I mean Marjorie knows I went, I was on it what for a year or so, year and a half? Something. I mean, and I was it was like I wouldn't even breathe, you know, sugar. Forget yeah. it. Now I'm spending my time with Marjorie going around trying to find the best tiramisu. So, you know. Well, that's true. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a lifelong pursuit. And where is the best tiramisu in New York, by the way? So far. So we're far. down to two. Well, the first one is on uh, what's Madison the... and 89th, 89th and Madison. And it's called what? Le Mans. Le Mans? Oh, it's not Le Mans, no. It's, it's Osteria. Oh, Austria, yeah, Austria. Yeah, and they make a tiramisu that's very good, very like a tiramisu should be, but on mm. top it has a coating of chocolate crunch. Mm. Really? Ooh, that's, uh, I'm sorry, that's not regulation, man. <laughs> what was this? Some, some... Then for the regulation, there's oh, a place oh, right down the street here. Olive Garden? No. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have the soft talk right man. down the street here that we go to. It's on yes. uh, Malcolm X Boulevard. They have a very good, and they have what I would call a real traditional tiramisu. They serve it on a plate as a square, not mm -hmm. in the cup or anything like that. And yeah. it's just it's right, right, cut in a square like lasagna, right? Yeah. Well, they yeah. make it in a big yeah. pan. Yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. Sounds good. Well. well off my low carb diet now. I don't have to bring that up. I got great tiramisu down the street for me here. I know, I know. Well, stay away from it. We'll support you. I'm probably going to go on a diet again. If nothing more, to make my doctor think I'm dying. I'm oh, doing geez. the low carb thing. You know what I've had <laughs> breakfast lately? Literally, you know, fresh fennel that's like celery. Yeah, I'm having Trader Joe's has that. You get that and you put almond butter or peanut butter on it and have that for breakfast with some coffee. And I'm talking, boom, Ew. I'm good. I had the whole illusion of uh, having something sweet, a sweet treat, and it's really good. I lost 21 pounds doing I that. I have raisin danish and coffee for breakfast. Looking at the <laughs> clock, we run out of time here. Let's say goodbye to the formerly fat Charlene Solis. <laughs> Let's say a, a goodbye to the formerly what? Fat, fat. Rotund. <laughs> fat in your life. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. worked out constantly. She's working out again. She's doing bar wow. exercises. Who? So am I. I'm learning to drink. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thanks to Charlie Wallace. Gee, Charlie, always love to have you here. Len. Great having you here, Andrew. Always a pleasure, Francine. A newly acquired friend on this program. We really appreciate it. Uh, Scott Boddicker, always great to have you here. Chris Cat. Nothing good to say about me. <laughs> <He's laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I'll be back with more electric car talk next week. <laughs> All right, we can hardly wait, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I'm holding my breath. Maybe we get exactly. into what is the best batteries to use in those cars. Double A's. <laughs> you know, you're not far from wrong. They actually do use a bunch of batteries stuck together. Uh, and uh, also thanks to John Ewing for being here. And of course, we finish off our program today by saying goodbye, everybody. And Edward Berger with... That's all, folks. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody. Thanks. Bye, for yeah. Thanks, Alex.